Oh, do say Palooza. That's the one, and it? it's probably end on that one. So this news kind of broke over the last couple of hours, or maybe last couple of days. I spoke on Monday. One of the co-founders of Duce Pusas, um was unfortunately accused of some heinous crimes uh, <laughs> towards females, mainly the ones that attended his events. And the fallout has been pretty catastrophic, really. And it? it goes to show just how damaging. Um, one singular event can be I'm always interested in that kind of thing right how damaging one singular action or a series of action can be to the wider community or to wider network of people especially those closest and nearest to you so he decides to do some scumbaggy stuff to girls you know coercing them into having sex and you know just generally being a bit of a creep and then it leads to him, one of his friends who's attached with the Joe Budden podcast, Rory, having to de- sort of not defend him, but essentially try and explain why he didn't pull him up sooner rather than later, which kind of, which kind of did serve for a very good conversation, an hour long conversation about the need for men to check each other. But it also kind of was very illuminating to see the difference um, in how people are treated depending on what scene they belong to, right? Because for sure, I'm sure within a dance music scene, electronic music scene, there is a lot of creeper behavior going on, right? I'm sure there are people out there taking advantage of young and impressionable girls or just people in general, not even girls. Everyone's probably getting taken advantage of to some extent in the electronic music space. But there's a part of me that is kind of proud that in electronic dance space, especially most of the raves I go to, I listen to a lot of hip hop, but I also mostly go to raves where they play dance music, electronic music, techno, house, disco. And most of these places, they try their best to uh, put together or put forward an idea of having these things in safe spaces, right? Where they have somebody at the door picking, somebody deciding whether or not you get in or not. Even if you've got the money, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get in. Maybe the imagery they use and the promotion, maybe the way that it's kind of shared online. There are things that you can do ahead of time to kind of set the tone as to what is acceptable and is acceptable on the dance floor. And quite honestly, like like my example I always make when I first went to Berghain and like an idiot, I tried to fucking take a pinger on a dance floor and someone random dude just like tapping the shoulder aggressively he's like no no we don't do that here you have to use the rooms that everyone else uses right so I use the toilet everyone else does and I quickly found out like you know that as much as this as much as that law of the kind of place burger and especially has been uh, perpetu- perpetuated by the interwebs most of the policing in that space is done by the people that dance there every weekend right they're very cognitive very aware that they've got a good thing here and they don't want me this fucking you know random tourist to come in and fuck out for everybody right that's not the best way to go about things so they say no don't do that here go in the toilet everyone else does it which is fair it's fine and everyone knows that's to do but it sets a tone because then I, when I go in there I told I told somebody else or I'm very cognitive of my environment and every time I've been there even I've not seen anyone being you know untold or uh, overstepping the mark everyone's just really well behaved but you can consider the amount of people that are in the Bergheim for one right or most electronic music clubs don't get me wrong the more popular ones around Little Bush and Shoreditch you know it's a fucking free for all but for the most part the ones that are very much attached to the idea of like perpetuating this culture and this community you usually everyone's okay but then you flip on the other side and you go to these other events where you know there is this kind of promoter led thing where the guy is like selling tables or is you know maybe under the guise of being some sort of pied piper of the club night that's when the problems can arise because then it becomes more so about the cult of personality than it is about the people in there having a good time and unfortunately as well for this episode because from the looks of it outside looking in they're probably one of the only parties that were especially hip-hop ones in the states that look like they were actively trying to sprinkle some of that sort of like you know studio 54 you know paradise garage sort of like you know dancing vibe right people actually looked like they were having fun they had like a big room with like no tables ready for the most part people just on the dance floor quote unquote grinding dancing having a good time doing you know competitions on the stage it looked like they were trying to steer it away from the sort of like you know screw face standing on the wall thing to making it more something that harkened back to the good old days right or people actually went to you know hip-hop parties to actually you know not only to hook up with girls but to try and you know outdo each other in the dance floor and just have a good time and sweat through their t-shirts and shit but um this is sort of you know 
maybe again it's not like a bad mark on anyone associated with it because you know only a person that did the crime should be punished in his respect i don't really, really i don't really agree with the whole sweeping cancellation thing but it's just such an unfortunate event for everyone involved for the girls they have to be subjected towards it to that kind of behavior and they have to relive it to the guy himself you just want to back off securing a deal with Giuseppe Palooza you'd think he'd try and maybe take his foot off the pedal and not be so creepy but you know sometimes people are just built a different way i think i've noticed that a lot with people that i used to hang around that i used to go out with sometimes uh, you know like some people just have a different they're just always on right they just can't turn it off that bit of them they can't be in a position where especially if you're putting on an event i think if you're maybe going out it's maybe different you know you're just trying to spread your seed quote unquote like a better term you're trying to get some attention from someone out there but when you put on an event i don't know i've put on many club nights i did this in places the last thing you're thinking about is hooking up with somebody right you're trying to remember if you've still got that track in the folder you're trying to make sure the person that's meant to pay you is there you're worried about a million different things as opposed to who looks hot or what you might notice something but that's far from your mind so to be that you know calculative or manipulative about your actions is really really unfortunate so let's see the actual story and read what was said here but um this is the one i think this is what started everything right this tweet from this lady i think on a monday that started the whole affair um bu- 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 says yeah it's a very rapey n-word on here everyone laughs with and supports his events i'm sitting waiting for the day someone <laughs> pulls his card i'm going to say this much person continues right um exposure is amazing but people will berate you to the point it's unbearable i don't need any stress right now i'm already on the edge i don't know other women who can tell their story i'm not physically assaulted but the situation was enough to make anyone who's heard the story okay this is pushy and too much and i'm grateful I was smart enough to remove myself before lines are blurred but yeah a lot of y'all support the boy so i'm not even gonna go there and that again is one of the issues i think with a lot of these events especially the ones that like you know led by the promoter and they're kind of pushed in that way um if you're going to be if you're going to market your event as a place where women can come and dance have a good time and feel safe you have to follow through you can't then be trying to holler at these people trying to you know get sexual favors from them or just trying to blur the lines point blank if you want to be the place where people you know work it with somebody in, in you know the world work it visions had that kind of reputation where you know maybe because you know the actual founders of that club night were girls themselves and they were very plugged into that whole kind of going out girl scene um there was maybe a bit more trust there but there was the idea or the word around town was if you went to hook up or you went to meet new girls you'd go to this event um but most of it most of that kind of uh most of these kind of events unless they uh, again if they're led by men they're usually going to attract not the kind of guys that other girls would want to be into either but again from why it's off on the outside again i'm living under i don't know what's going on it did look like they were the kind of people that seemed like they could have a whole group of girls just chilling having a good t- it looked like an extension of you know after hours people have you know when you're at a club somewhere and you'll go back to someone's house it doesn't necessarily mean because there's five girls and five boys you're all gonna hook up with each other it could just be a vibe in it they could just feel comfortable because um, i would imagine girls have a way they have a far longer checklist as to where and when they're willing to accept to go to people's houses than boys do boys probably you know if you've long as that person's got a fucking wi-fi connection they'd go and hang out in their house but girls probably have a lot more a lot more uh they have a lot more rules as to where they accept to go so if you are in a position where they're willing to hang out with you after hours you can't exploit that and take advantage of it you've sort of got to be a gentleman in that regard and if anything you've got to put yourself in a position where you're the one protecting them from untoward advances right you can't be the one being doing the creeping you've got to stop it to some and again how can you stop it if you're the one doing it it's just a very bizarre thing to do and also if you're putting on an event you should have some level of cloud that would allow you access to the people that you're hollering at especially in a less confrontational um creepo you know manipulative manner you should be able to secure some of their some of these women somehow right just off the strength of you doing the event because i'm sure there's some girls that don't mind hooking up with somebody that has some sort of notoriety they do exist out there but the ones that don't want to and just want to just be around and catch a vibe let them catch a vibe because again i think listening to the podcast i think a lot of them put too much 
emphasis on dudes pulling up other dudes i don't think that's fair because again it's not your issue and again how do you know a lot of guys that when they do their flagrant stuff they don't do it in front of people that they respect or that they know because they know what they're doing is wrong but they need to be told by in blank maybe by someone like you know maybe through interpretation maybe through events or seeing how people how they move that what they're doing is just too much it really is especially when you're the one promoting this idea that you know it's a safe space for girls and then you're putting in a position where they're having to keep these secrets about you it's just really weird and then another one here what are you saying this is another one it's another thing Ooh, I said here what's this clip there he says yeah i must this is a definitely what buried him right this is i'm i'm gonna speak on uh, my story one time <laughs> okay it says here's my story and i don't give a f what y'all gotta say about it i'm really curious about the confrontational nature of these whole accusations or these explanations of these stories why are these girls like being so confrontational is it because this guy is so well liked and regarded that people would what say the girl's a liar or something i don't understand why she's saying i don't give a what you'll say what is it because some dudes just won't believe you that's the question that's the worrying part about it they build a brand up that girls don't feel comfortable saying their truth about the event because they feel like the community is going to reject them or shun them that's not the way it should be in it Bloody hell. Anyway, says so the night in question, he picked me up in my home girl to go to a bar and club in low, low East Side. So this is just a general thing. This is not even okay. This is what makes it more scummy because I guess it's just a general thing that he does. It's not even a thing to tie to the event where you can blame your, you blame it on the, you know, on the alcohol or whatever it may be. It's just you plotting to do this stuff. So my girl is drunk, but does want to, but does want to leave me, but doesn't want to. Leave but doesn't want to leave me and ruin the night. I insist on calling her an Uber home. She asks me if, I, if I'm if i comfortable being a, just left with him. I say he's taken me home before and it should be fine. We put her in a the car, then it's just us and he leaves me alone in the bar for like an hour by, by myself, which I guess isn't that big of a deal. I guess if you're going to be with somebody, you would try and be a gentleman about it and, you know, make sure she's okay and i don't know hang out with the person after their friends left you would probably do that right but again this that's not the biggest deal i would say but hey let's continue he appears he appears offering me some juice eh? oh, this is a questioning part of it because you didn't ask for a drink and he's spit for an hour was he putting it that's where it gets risky so i drink it but i declined the second round offer he didn't ask if i'm ready to go home we get in the car and he's admittedly and he's immediately on 12 which is i guess turned up right he's kissing me trying to pull out at my clothes trying to get me to give him head while he's driving i say come on man just kiss it he says oh jesus christ anytime you say come on man it's just really bad he says at the time i'm still new to the city so i can't really tell whether he's driving me until it dawned on me that we weren't headed to my house bloody hell and it continues the next one i pull up to his place i'm shocked but you know blaming myself for possibly projecting mixed signals this is really bad we go inside he kicks it up another notch trying to take my jumpsuit off he pulling at the knots of my top and i said my nigga it took me it took two people to get me into this outfit i'm not taking a shit off for you he gets upset and says so are we not fucking tonight and i say firmly absolutely not so he says i bet and head back outside I follow him thinking I'm finally being taken home but he walks past his car heading to the cross street I follow trying to ease the tensions having some more talk he's basically ignoring me oh my god we get to the corner I ask him where we are going he stops by starts walking and says this is Myrtle Avenue I ask where we're going again and he just repeats this Myrtle Avenue I finally caught the hint that man left me on a random street corner in the middle of Berkeley and at 3 a.m. at the nearest train station was a mile away. I was still new to MLC. I'm sure my story is paled in comparison with others. So she got away lightly, right? She didn't have to exchange any sexual favors. But being taken on that much of a roller coaster ride, especially when you're. Because that's the thing that I think is bad about this, because there is a conversation to be had about, you know, should men be responsible? Um, should they car should be should they be should they be should they have most of the burden carry most of the burden when it comes to these this this game of sexual attraction and unfortunately i think they do because most guys can't aren't mature enough to deal with these situations in a mature way they get a little bit infantile and when someone rejects them they kind of you know immediately kind of tense up and become defensive and you know 
uh, confrontational or just being shitty humans like this because this is not a gentlemanly thing to do right if somebody declines your favors you should be gracious enough to take them back home or at least take them to the nearest station or i don't know or just be a gentleman and just let them chill until the morning when their friends are up whatever there should be a way to kind of defuse the situation and it may be that is the point that maybe that is the guy's responsibility because usually in those positions the kind of power positions the guy has probably more uh he's probably more of a threat to the girl as opposed to being the other way around so you probably have the responsibility to make sure that that person feels that they're that it's okay that they said no and nothing else is going to happen if they want to go home they can you wouldn't want them to get in the cab or they can get you whatever it may be you're more than willing to do that but this way it's just really really deep and again she's saying she got off lightly right he left her in the lurch like this and let's continue on <laughs> I think they've already cut ties with him anyway, innit? So I think he's already done for, you know, getting cancelled during lockdown is a mad one. But here's another one, which I probably assume is going to be worse because I haven't read any of these. But it's just strange. I just don't know why you'd want to do that, you know? Again, if you invite these girls to your events or you want to perpetuate this idea that you're somehow an event for girls to feel comfortable, like, why would you be this much of a creep? And anyway, it continues. Um, Elizabeth Taylor. She read this here. More messages with this sick. I only blacked out the address to protect people. Other people may also live there. It says, yeah, better see you tonight. It says, things up. What's your ID on the way? It says, the, the, I look hella bummy. You judging me and we squaring up at ETA. 13 minutes. Okay, what's wrong with this? Continue. What time you get off? 8.30. Okay, see you then. I get off at 8.30. Won't be back to be canceled at 9. Then you got to wash, so maybe 10 wash i'll wash when i get home after leaving you kind to eat and run my mouth <sighs> so already they're stating the, what the game is right coming to eat and run my mouth so they're saying look i'm not coming to wash and fuck i'm just going to hang out you have really got you you really gone cook or are you bullshitting so you really not gonna wash or are you bullshitting so i'm not going to shower when i get home i'm coming from work why would i stop home to do that i won't come back out you're gonna come around me smell it like a long day jesus christ why not talk to me if you never take it there and because something for years ago good morning to you too chris good morning why not why talk to me assuming as i was going to quick fuck you saw i wasn't and you threw me out of your crib so you're not going to ask my question i was never going to talk to you on the premise of fucking you i thought you were cool and i assume we will sort of be cool so let me get to your answer okay okay guess you don't have one jesus christ this guy man <sighs> the lack of game is quite frightening in it but it's also not surprising i guess think it kind of illustrates why or it kind of does it's a fair illustration as to why so many men were interested um doing those you know pua pickup seminars and conferences and stuff because most dudes just don't have any game none none devoid of it. especially someone like this who's I'm assuming around people that do or you put in a position where you know you should be able to you know you should be able to attract women in your life that you want because you have access to them mostly right because I think that's usually the big stumbling block just being in a because I think most dudes would feel like they have a chance with somebody maybe a bit out of the league just as long as they get in the room but sometimes just being in a room is very difficult because you know people of high stature people of high value people that kind of view themselves highly regardless are going to put themselves in positions where they're not around common folk like you know it's just what it is and that's why most celebrities date other celebrities but when you're in a room you give yourself a fair enough chance because you know you think you have some level of swag some level of game some kind of character twerk or quirk whatever it may be that can attract somebody but then to do this just shows that you know number one you're not because that's how you should have with this like if you're gonna do this you're gonna you're gonna maybe do it especially when most of these people are going i'd assume especially the girls are probably friends of friends or they're running the same circles or i don't know whatever especially the ones that live in new york you'd want to make sure your name isn't muddied in the streets right you'd want to do right by what even if it is because something you're just going to do as a quick hookup you want to make sure that you treat everyone nicely so that when your name is brought up it's not like you know people just chipping in and you know besmirching you and making saying the most ludicrous things behind closed doors it's someone that might have a bad experience with you don't get me wrong because people do have bad experiences but mostly everyone's sort of like got a good experience to say about you in general that's what you'd want especially when you're not in the room 
But I think that's the most important, isn't it? What people say behind closed doors, what people say in front of you isn't what really matters. It's what people say when you're not around. That really is a judge of your character. And of course, this dude then decides to get on the internet. And, you know, I do say police actually stepped in. They're the ones that sort of like pulled the plug and everything, which again is incredibly disappointing because not only did he damage his reputation, he also had his reputation as a brand. He kind of smudged everybody else. You have Rory on the podcast talking for an hour about something that he didn't do. It's just a really disappointing situation. And you have here, Tuesday Palooza's um, statement, we're aware the allegation made against one of our staff members. We're currently conducting an internal investigation around the allegation. And to the British Council have concluded that staff member has been placed on his definite leave, which is, imagine he probably had access to his account. And now all of a sudden during the whole transition we do say it might have been turned over to an external in the social media team or they might have locked him out of it and now they're making these updates it's just a catastrophe man that catastrophe for everybody involved and with that said we've always made the safety outcomes consumers and talent and staff our top priority we pride ourselves in creating a safe space and enjoyable environment that will remain our focus for moving forward into the future shows and events after four considerations this year 22 hours we have decided to sever ties with a staff member who is currently who's initially put on under investigation under internal investigation effective immediately staff seven members no longer part of as a team and we will not host any of our events going forward it's always been our goal to create and maintain an environment where everyone feels safe we admittedly reject we admittedly reject any instance where women are made to feel otherwise which is fair enough because i think a lot of the stuff that he was doing was just him being a creeper and everyone else is kind of piling in here this is feels kind of passive like i don't completely believe what's going on i think the internal investigation is okay i think even if he did suffer off for his hands you sh- he they should be allowed to investigate and see what's going on um why are you explaining what is this what's this broker check what the check what is this about i don't know what this this screenshot is about this is him previously registered broker if it was banned individual from acting as a broker otherwise associated as a broker i don't know what this is about but whatever um and then finally he decided to ill 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 advise explanation on video I think in this occasion, there's nothing really you can say in it. You did the shit. You just got to, like, take the L. Apologize to those people that's, that are involved. Don't even take the L. You've got to really look yourself in the mirror in it, really and truly. If you're going to do stuff like this in this kind of arena, especially knowing the access you have, knowing the people that depend on you, and just in general, and it just being a kind of a good dude. That's, again, that's why I go back to the whole taking up scene and dance culture music. There are We do have our problems, don't get me wrong, but this isn't necessarily a thing people aren't necessarily starting nights to use it as a kind of as a front to you know get close to attractive women they're using it as a front to maybe look cool to these women or to maybe look cool to certain dudes whatever it may be but it's not necessarily just the front to kind of get access to girls i mean that's what it looks like that this guy was effectively doing which is really really a bad way to go about things but his apology video is somewhere along here where is it then there's this clip here of him is it defending Cosby someone said I don't know if this is true but bloody hell it's a whole entire madness of situation again it's all alleged you know there's no I guess it's all she, you can could you say he says he said not really because he, you know those accounts they're coming from multiple oh, women there's no really he says she said really in it you especially when I think when one or two stories come out you can maybe rationalise it some way there is maybe a way to explain it but when you have 10 plus people from all different places in the country or from different social groups saying the same thing about somebody it just is what it is isn't it they're just a shitty human being um so this is a video from twitter someone said so he was what defending cosby what's this we put it like this bill Cosby, black biggest tv show no matter what race everybody was watching kind of mm-hmm. million and times and times over Height of his career. A woman goes to a hotel with a married man. He fucked up by himself. He, I'm gonna tell you what he Why fucked is she up. Why is she going there? I mean, she's I'm gonna tell you what he fucked up. Imagine, imagine choosing the hill to down, and you want to choose to down the Bill Cosby hill. I don't think that's the one. And then some ill advised What did, he just did? He did defend himself, I think, from it, and he stepped in and made some videos. But 
it's not is it worth even playing him now probably not regardless RIP that dude's career for the most part I guess it is what it is lessons are going to be learned maybe there is an opportunity maybe for some people to step in and provide that safe space for girls in that scene because I guess there is a need for those kind of parties right for girls within the hip hop scene to feel like they can come out look cute and not have you know not be worried that the person that invited them is going to try and fuck them in a car on the way home um, that is something to look so that's, some, that's a that's a kind of reasonable uh, hesitation to have so maybe someone can step in and make a rave that kind of cater to that I don't know how you do it um, there is a way to do it I'm sure because it's been done before but ugh, just yeah it's such a bad move man for all involved but again I'm glad they addressed it um, or the Joe the, Budden the podcast actually not, not him I think he's addressing it, it was horrendous I think he tried to defend himself and say that he didn't rape anybody well that's not the point really isn't it that's not about the raping even if you did do that whatever it's about the scammy behavior in it like you can't just be leaving people in the streets at three in the morning because they don't want to put out that's just nuts isn't it especially when if you read the story it looks like she was given an indication that she didn't want to do anything from the beginning anyway so it's like yeah guys are scumbag in it 